This is my internet pastor. I always watch him. And um, today's sermon was just really, really, really good. And God always says that you will be um, blessed by the works that you do. And the works that you do is you spreading his word. So I'm going to spread what touched me today to you guys. And if you don't want to hear it, it's okay. It's not always about being funny all the time. It's about, you know, just helping others. So this word helped me today. So I'm going to help you guys. Okay. Yeah. It's not long. He, um, he doesn't preach like long. He's like my pastor at the church I go to where they have like, they're on a schedule. Like it's like a, it's a format. Okay. Anyway, let's go. In typical sociopathic fashion, rather than to embrace the defeat, He falsely proclaimed that it was stolen from him. As outlandish as the claim sounds, that he would believe that he didn't win, that it was stolen, as outlandish as that claim sounds to the rational mind. I want you to analyze it from a micro vantage point. The allegations you've heard from your friends, your sorors, your line brother, your relative, or even yourself. You don't even realize how much you and it's, it's going to lag like Trump because I got this. When you said they stole your man. You know what? Let me wait a minute. They me. stole your girlfriend. I'm cutting the comments off to y'all get together. You were delusion to believe that it would never be taken from you. Trying to capture and contain what you love can become toxic. Hmm. In a vulnerable conversation, Lauren London disclosed how slain artist Nipsey Hussle once told her, you can't possess people, you can only experience them can't possess people you can only experience them you can steal somebody's car Hmm. you can steal somebody's watch you can steal watch this somebody's bag but you can't steal a person okay y'all good now the problem is when you become passionate about something or you become passionate about someone Mm -hmm. you want to hold on to it You get on a playground, a slide that flip-flops around being uh, fascinated, enchanted, bewildered, bewitched. The problem is that it's uh, one-dimensional and doesn't project itself onto the object of your affection. You feel love, you want to possess them The problem is they may not want to be held. They don't want to be contained. A picture captures a moment. But a picture cannot capture a frame of mind. Far too many of you all look good in pictures. You're going to post them next week. But it doesn't reflect where the thought process is. And so the picture, you keep applying a filter because you don't like how it really looks. The film has not been developed and you pulled it out prematurely. A one-sided relationship will have you looking sideways. I better say that again. A one-sided relationship will have you looking sideways. I got to be honest with you. I have never seen Jehovah seem so jilted as he appears in the book of Hosea. The Lord is heartbroken. His beloved children are so unfaithful when he has proven to be dutiful. They chase after deities who have never delivered. He brought them out of bondage and they keep looking for handcuffs. He protected them from COVID, but they can't keep their covenant. Hmm. He disconnected soul ties 
but they refused to tithe. He sustained them while they were in a season of transition. He put them in houses when they had no established credit. I try to allow people to write. Because, he kept food on. on the table. I try to allow people to write, you guys, because sometimes you want to, when you write stuff out, it's like you're giving out your amen, but I see people can't be mature, but we'll keep listening. When the stimulus check was being debated and God had to ask, what more do I have to do mm -hmm. to make you faithful to me? What has to happen to get you to worship me? Hmm. When it was a choir, it was too loud. When it was a praise team, it was too fast. When it's just three, I want more. What is necessary for you to give your whole heart over to God? Hmm. Why won't you give him what he wants from you when the only thing he desires is to possess you? He doesn't even want just one part of you. This is how greedy a lover God is. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. And he wants your mind. And here you are trying to keep a jealous lover at bay. Come on. By giving him an hour and 15 minutes on Sunday. But he ain't heard from you. You spend no quality time. You set up no dates. You don't dream out loud. You only call him when you want something. Right. And then you don't understand how he'll rearrange your life to make you come back to him. Come on. He'll kick over the tables because he's waving his hand saying, look at me. <laughs> I've been faithful over everything. And I can't make you faithful over a few things. The thing that scares me about God. And I never realized it until I read this passage of scripture. What scares me about God is I never realized uh, that the Lord will project his feelings onto people. What did you just say, Pastor? The Lord will project his feelings onto people. Is evidence in Hosea. Verse number one. When he told his servant. This is what he told his servant. This is what he told the man of God. This is what he told the anointed one. This is what he told somebody who was a covenant keeper. He told them, go marry a promiscuous woman. Mm -hmm. And because I don't want it to be for appearances, somebody going to be upset. I don't want you to have this marriage just for the church. I don't want this just for likes. So to make sure y'all together have children with her. And I want you to have children with her so Israel will know, here's the catch, what I feel like. I want God to be in such a good mood that he sends people into my life that when people see who is in my life, they will think immediately, God must felt good when he sent them into your life. Hmm. God, God keep was listening. on the right side of heaven when he ordained, this is who you are supposed to be with. Mm -hmm. um, he, he gave Hosea, God, I feel bad for Hosea. I really do. He, he gave Hosea an unthinkable assignment of taking on an undeserving person. I got to help you because your former pastor, your Sunday school teacher, your seminary facilitator messed this up. I need you to hear me well. Um, he told her, he, go marry Goma. Hear this. And Goma is not a prostitute. No, she ain't. Mm -hmm. She's not a prostitute. She is promiscuous. Pastor, help me. Uh, she wasn't doing it for finance. She was doing it for a feeling. Mm -hmm. Y'all not going to like it. This is grace for grown-ups. She, she wasn't sleeping with people for opportunity. She was sleeping with them for orgasms. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see if I can help you. Lord, save me from being with people who put their feelings, feelings. in front of their future. Come on, Jamal. They will make decisions based off of how it feels Come and on. how it will impact them. Lord, deliver me from, from my, my feelings. feelings. Yes. So I don't do stuff out of emotion and it jeopardizes my assignment and my call and what it is that you got in my life. Lord, in this season of my life, I would rather hurt somebody's feelings mm -hmm. than hurt my destiny. Come on. God, I would rather them not speak to me than you not talk to me. Mature me so that my feelings don't mess up my future. There you go. Here's, here's what's problematic that I needed you to hear. God told Hosea, go marry a woman who likes dropping it. <laughs> God help me. Tells the man of God, go get the woman, here it is, who's doing the busted challenge. <laughs> go, go, go get the woman who is saved and doing the silhouette challenge. Y'all don't like me in here. Say, go get the woman, here it is, who puts her outside as a greater value than her, her inside. inside. Come on, Jamal. And the Lord told Hosea to go get her. Hear this. And I scoured all of Hosea. And here's what I found. I have no evidence Hosea is even attracted to her. Hmm. God help me. Y'all wait till he bring this around. He goes with her um, out of obedience. Mm -hmm. I want to say this. And I don't know where you are. And I don't even know how you ain't running through your house right now. <laughs> I am praying that the Lord does not allow you to get connected to somebody you ain't attracted to. Mm. Oh God, help me. I'm, I'm praying that the Lord does not allow you to entertain people who will not, in fact, stimulate your intellect more than your body. Mm. I'm praying that God will put somebody in your life that will energize you and not drain you. Come on. I'm praying that God will put somebody into your space that will pray for you and not pray on oh, you. Come on. God will put somebody in your life who is not looking for what they can get, but are trying to find what they can give. Lord, deliver me. Come on. From being in anything that feels like an obligation. God, I'm preaching better than y'all are shouting. Lord, deliver me from being in anything that feels like work. Come on. The Lord, deliver me from anybody that makes me feel like I hate going home. Come on. God, I need to <laughs> deliver me from that. I, I don't want Hosea's experience. He's anointed. He's called. He got glory on his life. And the Lord tells him, go get this promiscuous woman that don't even turn him on. And here's the monkey wrench. Come on, Jamal. Hosea is anointed. Hosea is called. Hosea has an assignment. And then she what? steps out on him. Come on. Talk about it. The nerve of it. Talk about it. I wish you would. Step out on me. And here's what I got to tell somebody. Talk about it. And I'm telling you this is going to upset some folk. Talk about it. 50 people are getting ready to log off. Others of you getting ready to attend to your residency. Because I've said you this before. This. Talk about you it. want it, but I got to give it to you. Hosea is asking a question that many have had to ask. I have. How do you betray me mm. and I'm anointed? Come on. God, help me. Come God, on. I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to run through this camera. I want to tell you this. Your anointing uh -huh. will not make people faithful. There you go. God, help me. Your anointing will not force people to treat you right. Mm. Your anointing will not block them from lying to you. Mm. Your anointing will not cover you from a broken heart. Mm. Your anointing will not make them step down to a lower degree. Your anointing will not block you 
from going through a divorce. Come on. Your anointing will not ensure you won't be lonely. You can be anointed for the world, but that one person can't even accept the oh, anointing on your life. And you be trying. Your anointing, hear this? Your anointing will not make them passionate. Right. God help me. I don't want nobody to love me no more. Your I want you to be passionate for me. Your anointing will not arouse them at night. Come God, on. God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Your anointing will not, in fact, infiltrate so that they don't become a roommate. Mm. And the problem is, I, I don't even like them like that. <laughs> God, help me. <laughs> I'm the one anointed. I'm the one that's called. Talk to I'm him. the one that's set apart. Talk to him, Jamal. I'm the one that's been faithful. I'm the one that's heard his voice. I am the one who's put my entire life on the hold to serve him. They don't know where you're going, Jamal. And you got me crazy in these streets. Come on. Bring it around. You got me looking like there's something wrong with me. You making folk look at me side eyes. And I'm the one that's faithful. God, how'd you put me we in this when I don't even like them like that? Bring it around, Jamal. And Jesus said to him. What? I, I know. How you feel. I know how you feel. Come on. Because I feel the same way. Come on, Jamal. Come on. I've been trying to figure out how you ain't eating. Yes. Oh, my God. And I'm the bread of life. Hello. I'm trying to figure out. Hello. How it is you keep picking up your phone. And I keep telling you I never sleep and I never slumber. I gotta see the comments. And if you call on me, I will answer that. Whatever you ask in my name, come it on. I'll be done. I'm thinking the same thing. How you can't sleep over some Negro and I'm wide awake trying to find a way to bless you. God told me to tell you, I don't understand. Right. He said something. Right. And Jesus said, I remember dying on that cross. Yes. Hallelujah. I died on that cross while you were on Tinder. Hmm. God help me. I, I died on that cross while, while you were on Pornhub. I, I died on this cross right. while, while you were lowering your standards to and cook he's up right with there. somebody you know was not your spiritual equal. I died on that cross while it is that you forgot to worship me for blessing you in the city and blessing you in the field. And somebody asked the question, God, why did you do it? And on behalf of all of us who have felt that way, I got to give you the answer. Mm. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I, I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But I'm so glad. Thank if you're you. glad, you ought to be giving him glory. Come I'm on. so glad. I'm so glad that he did. Come on, Jamal. He said, Jamal, tell the people of God, I don't like him like that. <laughs> Right. I love them. Come on. God help me. You have settled for people liking you. Right. When they never loved you. Come on. Do you know how many people are dying on the cross of Instagram for likes? Mm. And they feel so secure by getting likes because they have never been loved. Mm. I need somebody in this room who's believing by faith. That God loves me even when I didn't know how to love myself. I got to pause right here. This is just for a love fest. I know Valentine's ain't till next week. But if you love him, would you open up your mouth and just begin to worship him right there? If you love him, will you just give him glory right where you are? I said, if you love him, I'm talking about you got a crush on him. I, I don't mean you <laughs> like him a little Thank bit. You, Jesus. But I love you this love sermon today. More. Than anything, will you bless him in this moment? Yes, 
Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. How do you know, preacher? He loves me. For the Bible tells me so. I'm going to say something to you and I need you to hear me in the spirit realm. I prayed all week for you. In earnest, there are those of you. Your friend has sent this to you after I was live. Mm -mm -mm. There are others of you who had to go watch this in the middle of the night. There are others of you who are going to have to watch it next Saturday. I prayed for you in earnest and I didn't pray for you to be rich. I didn't pray for you to be famous. I didn't pray for you to live in a mansion. I prayed that God will give you the exit. Come on. Away from who you don't like like that. Come on. I'm praying for God to disrupt. Come on. Whatever is a compromise to your call. I'm praying for God to set up obstacles for anybody who is an enemy to your anointing. By the time I see you next Sunday, I want you to celebrate Valentine's with you. Yes. That I love my future too much. Yes. To fall out because of my, my feelings. feelings. Come on. I don't know where you are, sir. I don't know where you are, ma'am. But I'm telling you, you done survived enough stuff to have given up on love. You've endured enough hmm. to have no confidence in people. Yeah. You should have waved the white flag a long time ago. Come on. Based off of what you've seen and what you've experienced. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you forthrightly, there is no love like the love of God. I'm telling you that God loves you before you get yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> before you lose the weight, before you get your hair dead, right. <laughs> before you get that body snatched, before you get that wardrobe, God loves you, hear you, hear me, at your ugliest. Because even in your ugliest, God sees the beauty. My covenant brother Marvin Sapp sings the song, he sees the best in me when everybody else sees the worst in me. But I want the best in you to come out. And I believe one of the ways that it can come out is you've got to get connected to a church. I was on uh, this morning and I said to people, you know, you are at a wounded, contorted place mm -hmm. when you have mastered brushing your teeth and you can't look in the mirror. You know that something is out of order when you feel ashamed, naked, hear this, and you're home alone. You know, something is out of sorts. When you are embarrassed by a compliment. I'm believing that God's going to heal you today. That God is going to pull you together. That God is going to do everything that you need. For you to experience That's my love at an optimum level. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. Just so you don't feel fool tricked or played on. I got to tell you this. I want to be your pastor. I do. I want to see you grow. Hear this. I, I want to see you loved. <laughs> I'm going to say that's the name of the church, you guys. It's New Birth. I'm going to tell you in a second where to go watch this again. I want to perform your wedding. <clears throat> God, did, can, it's about to be done. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on. I want to say that again. I want to perform your wedding. And I got to tell you, I ain't going to do it if they toxic. I ain't going to do it. Here it is. If I feel like it's going to bring you down. I ain't going to do it if I feel like y'all are unequally yoked. But I want to perform your wedding. I want to see God get the glory out of both of you. Whether you know him or not, you met him or not. Those of you who are in a marriage, I am praying now that God will secure it. That he'll make it divorce proof, separation proof. That God is going to bring healing to that marriage. I worship and adore you. If you want to join New Birth, you want to be a part of a ministry that still believes in love. Still believes in marriage. Still believes in reconciliation. Still believes in wholeness and happiness. I want you to do it. I want you to join this church. Let me be your pastor. Let me be your shepherd. Let me perform open heart surgery on the broken parts of your life. Mm. Broken parts of your being. I love you, Jesus. Come on, Jamal. I love you. Here it is. There ought to be some expression of that love. It's a terrible thing for you to love somebody and they only express it on special occasions. You only.
only going to dinner on Valentine's Day. Come on, Jamal. You're only getting a Chris gift on Christmas. That is not love. Okay, so y'all, this God. um this church is called New Birth. All you got to do is go to New Birth Baptist Church. It's here in Atlanta, Georgia. Go on YouTube, do New Birth Baptist Church. And this was the sermon today. It was called, I Don't Like Them Like That. And that was the sermon we just watched is New Birth Baptist Church on YouTube. I watch him live every Sunday. He comes on around 1130, 1150 every Sunday. I'm always watching every Sunday. Um, I, when I tell you, I watch this message and cry my eyes out. I, um, it was just, he always has a really good message despite what I, some people be saying he has like, two or three wives or whatever. I don't even believe that, Craig. You know how people lie. But just like I'm not perfect, I don't care if you're a pastor or not. Pastors aren't even going to be perfect. Every day we strive to be the best person. You know what I'm saying? So don't try to judge somebody else when you're not even right. You know? So I don't care what nobody says about him. If this man is getting a word out to me and it makes me feel good on the inside and makes me love and want to spread the word of love, then that is what I want to do. I don't care what you do in your private time. That's something you have to take up with God on your own. The same way I have to take up my own problems with God on my own. So at the end of the day, the word touched me. I loved it. And I wanted to share it with you all because it really meant a lot to me today because that's what I be going through. I be going through always trying to, I'm going to cry. Don't cry. I be going through always trying to help other people. And I forget that i I deserve good myself. Like I'm always trying to pick somebody else up, make sure somebody else who's going through worse than me is better. And in the midst of doing that, I end up hurting myself. And like he said, stop trying to always find that person and find it in God because I do. I, I find myself forgetting about how special I am. And you just, and you start to get bitter and it's just, y'all, it's so much. And uh, I really, 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 really needed this today because I am such a, oh, don't do it. I am such a good person. And it's like you're trying to make people fall in love with you when somebody should already want to love you and be passionate for you because of who you are and not by you trying to make somebody fall in love with you. But anyway, I'm going to go because I'm getting sensitive. Ah, all right. I just really love this message today. It was really good. Um, It's... um. New Birth Baptist Church on YouTube. I love his sermons. They're always really, really good. This one today was, um, I don't like them like.